Right. Riley Reef of the Minnesota Vikings, who has been with the team for three years. He signed a five year deal after his rookie contract with the Lions ended. He was a first round pick in 2012. He's got that C on his jersey. Yeah. He may not have a jersey any longer. This one's amazing to me, although in hindsight, I guess I'm not really all that surprised. Yeah, you shouldn't the Vikings be. are playing the take a pay cut or take a hike game. With Riley Reef in the out years of his contract, there's no guaranteed money left. There was no trigger back in March to have a, a, a big roster bonus or guarantee his salary. So th this happens all the time. And, and look, is it right? Well, I don't know. They have the right to do it. You go to a veteran player with an inflated salary and you say, when there's not any real time to find another job, we don't want to pay you $10.9 million this year. We're going to pay you X instead. Take it or leave it. And if you leave it, we leave you behind. Yeah. And Riley Reef, I'm told, was telling teammates yesterday he expects to be cut. Now, maybe this is part of the stare down, right? Maybe this is part of the poker yep. face that he needs to show right. as the Vikings decide whether or not they want to go forward without Riley Reef. But, you know, Chris, I, we see this every year. It happens every year. Some guys take pay cuts. Some guys don't. But it's always hard to go out there and get what you would have gotten or get what they would have paid you on a reduced contract signing with a new team less than two weeks before the start of the yeah, season. Yeah, well, you know, as a player, you're, you're, you're handicapped here. I mean, what, what, are you, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, you're not going to go on the free market right now or, or get cut and find that contract out there. You'll have a hard time, you know. There's only going to be a limited amount of teams that might even want your services at this point. You know, yeah, I mean, he'll have some action, but – you know, for the most part, teams have got their guys in there and they've been taking reps and they've got the, you know, the, the, the unity as far as between the five starting offensive linemen. Like to me, this is like, and especially in a year like this, it's even worse with the pandemic and everything like this. It's kind of, uh, you know, to me, bad business. I wish this is something that they'd find a way to get rid of in the NFL or, or, you know, NFL players. Oh, oh, I'm the starting tailback. Oh, oh. I'm I'm not going to play week one now that I'm the starter until I get a new contract. Oh, oh, I'm starting at right tackle this week. Oh, you cut the other guys that were competing. Oh, I, I mean, I, then this is what players need to do. They need to start doing the same games. This is what I, I would argue, uh, because this is one of the tougher things as a player. You're really in a tough spot here. You can't get away with that, though. You can't. You cannot do it. I mean, I advocate. Yeah, I know. What players. You, yes. But the idea of threatening to walk out or not play, to abandon your team at the start of the season. Right, yeah. Look, I've made the argument before that a, a guy should hold out of the playoffs, right? I made that argument on Le'Veon Bell's behalf, that, that that's the time to do it. That's your maximum leverage. That if you're one of these first-round picks that played really well and you finished your third season and you're getting ready to go to the postseason like Patrick Mahomes, hey, hey Pay me my contract now or I'm, I'm, I'm not playing in the playoffs. You, you're going to alienate the fans. You're going to alienate your teammates. You're just going to come you off are. as you a are. guy that, that doesn't like football. And, and you're going to be you're going to be strapped with that for the rest of your career. So I, the, the, the answer is simple, Chris. The contracts have to be negotiated so that in every year there is that requirement to make a decision early. Yeah, right. $2 million right. roster bonus payable on March 15th. That's the fix. $5 million of the salary becomes fully guaranteed on March 15th. Whatever it is, you force them to deal with you, with your salary, and with your cap number in March so they can't play this game. Yeah. Because the way it's set up, they can. And here's what happens. And this, this technically it's tampering. The agent will call around. Once the agent knows what the Vikings are willing to pay Riley Reef, he'll call around to other teams saying, what would you pay Riley Reef? What would you pay Riley Reef? It's tampering for the teams to engage in those conversations, but it happens, and you need to know. As the agent, you need to know what's behind door number two before you tell the Vikings to stick door number one up their butts. So, pardon me. Sorry, London. But, uh, <laughs> but that, that's, that's how this works. And you don't want to be in that spot where you're all of a sudden – on a Monday afternoon in late August, calling every team in the league saying, do you need a new left tackle right. two weeks from the start of the season? Yeah, no, I mean, you're exactly right. You know, and just to hit on, like, the football aspect of this in Minnesota, there's obviously got to be somebody in camp that's impressing them to know that, okay, well, if Riley does walk away, you know, Rashad Hill, who's a guy who's played tackle for them before in Minnesota – you know, he, maybe he's impressing. So they're not afraid if, if Riley Reef does walk away. I will say I'm a little surprised. I am, you know, 
Again, this was a, one, a, a pretty damn good offensive line last year as far as the run game's concerned. Pass protection-wise, not the best always, but uh, you know this is, this is the tough thing about no preseason. It's moves like this, offensive line. We can't evaluate them. We can't see them. We don't know, ooh, this guy got put in with the first-team offensive line. He must be impressing. And those are context clues we usually get, and we're just totally clueless right now as far as uh, that stuff is concerned. My understanding is that the thought would be Brian O'Neill moves from right tackle to left tackle okay. where Rod Hill steps up as the right tackle. Ezra Cleveland was drafted in round two by the Vikings to eventually replace Riley Reef. He's not ready for that yet. In fact, they were trying him out of guard, but apparently that didn't not work. Not enough butt there. Uh, not, enough, uh, yeah. not, enough, not enough power there to handle that yet, I don't think. And, and so they go forward. If this happens, if this isn't some big bluff by the Vikings, and I don't think they tend to bluff, I think they go to Riley Reef serious that this is what they're willing to pay. And if he says no, then they move on. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.